how did the name Blade and Bow come about? Right. That's a great question, right? So it still comes back to the stories. And yes, you know, I mean, it's like, I feel like every day that I talk about this whiskey, I have this like distinct privilege of being able to talk about and be a steward for historical stories that aren't ours. We don't own them in any right, but we have to find a way to give them the respect they deserve because obviously, you know, you talk about Stitzeweller and it's like a cornerstone of like this industry and what it's grown up to be. I think that's probably one of the good things that are, that we should probably reiterate to a lot of our listeners that might be new to this world is that Stitzeweller is by far is one of the powerhouses of American whiskey back in the day. And to this day, if you can get your hands on old bottles of Stitzeweller, most people say it's some of the best whiskey that you've ever tasted. Unfortunately, it was just, you know, like everything else, just suffered from a wrong, glut era. Wrong place, right time. Yeah. Wrong time. <laughs> yeah, exactly. exactly. They could just survive 10 more years. It would have been. It might have been okay. Might yep. have been okay. And that's, and, that's, and that's one of the things that people need to understand is that's what made Van Winkle famous was Stitzeweller stock. It's not because of the name. It's not because whatever. It's because of that particular whiskey that made them famous. Anyway, back to your yeah. story. So it would a hundred percent agree, right? Like, and and we can go into all that history too. And it's it's so it's so fascinating. And like, I feel lucky that I get to go to that facility as many times as I do and walk around and just feel it and soak it in. And it's it's soaking all of that in that really the ghost of Weller past kind exactly. of just hanging out there. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. So it's soaking all that in that really gives you the opportunity to like see how it's manifest in the bottle. So. The, back to the name. So blade and bow is the anatomy of a skeleton key. So like, just like the key that's on this bottle here, this is the, uh, the blade is going to be the, uh, shaft of the key. And then the bow is going to be the ornate handle. So the name itself, even though it feels like a, an, a hunting reference almost, <laughs> right. You know, hunting slash, uh, farming, something like that. Right. Knows, yeah. It is the just like our uh, logo itself, which is those five keys, it's it's referential to that story, the five keys, right? And it's, I think, when you look at a lot of stuff coming out of Stitzel or anything that is connected to like the last or the last remaining, you have like a lot of key imagery, and it's because of that idea that when they opened Derby Day, nineteen thirty-five, there were five keys that hung on the front door, and they were that symbol of the five steps of making great whiskey. So it's that grains, yeast, fermentation distillation and maturation but what i always find to be the the cooler part of the legend of that is that they were the actual keys to the building and so it was a symbol it's like it's like eh, it's not hitting the rock up front you don't have to lift that or underneath the doormat it's literally just hanging on the door if you want to go if you want to it's come like in. it's right here <laughs> i just love that from a like from a symbolic perspective it's like i think it represents hospitality in the bourbon industry like that kind of gesture it's like before bourbon tourism before all of that before there was a bourbon trail for people to be trying to come and visit if you had business there and you saw the keys on the front door then you already knew that you could get through the barrier, that it was open welcome for you. So it was this idea of like you had that feeling approaching the building. And uh, so that's just, that's one of the, one of the stories that I think inspired such a beautiful package as well. Mm -hmm. 